afternoon all. Um, weather's a bit pants today, um, so uh, flash floods and that are going around again, more thunderstorms. So uh, I'm not up to getting zapped by a couple of bolts of lightning, uh, and I don't fancy getting drenched through today. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I make my own wire traces for my lures. Um, I've stopped buying mine from the shops because I find they're either too expensive or they're just not up to the job or even they're not long enough. Um, a lot of people don't realise um, having a wire trace, you need to be 30 centimetres to 18 inches sort of distance. Purely so if, if, a, <clears throat> if, a, if a fish takes the lure, you have to think about if the fish was to wrap round, um, it could cut you short. So the, the, the trace goes round the head, but the braid ends up, or mono, ends up in the mouth of the pike. So you need it long enough. Take best case scenario, you get a 20 to 25 pound pike. Um, the span of the head from the mouth, and that can be quite big. So um, you need to take the best case scenarios if you're going to catch one. Um, obviously you don't want to snap off because you've only got a, a six, seven inch uh, wire trace, which is what you get at the shops, which is just rubbish. So I'll put some photos up uh, of the stuff I use. You can get it all off eBay or Amazon, even your local tackle dealer um, that will carry it. Um, it may cost a couple of quid to start up with, but um, long term uh, you'll save a lot of money. And you, uh, with the lose as well, you you, you know you, you snag something up, you're going to get the lose back, as long as the braid matches the um, the wire trace. Always have to make sure it matches up. Um, to be fair, uh, mine <laughs> I'm saying that now, mine's not going at the moment because I've just gone to 80 pound Power Pro braid, um, but the wire trace is I'm sure yeah it's 60 pounds, so that doesn't match. However, that is really strong. So whether it be the canal or the river. I, pretty much going to get anything back unless I, I hook something proper heavy on the bottom so um, yeah I'll um, I'll crack on and show you what I do Right guys, so this is the stuff I'm going to use. Um, I'll put pictures up anyway, but um, that's one of the, um, the links I used to use. I've kind of gone off that now because you've got to add a swivel onto it. Uh, it can be a bit fiddly, especially if you go fishing in the dark. Um, this one is another one I tried. I think, it's, I think it was Fox, but it hooks over the bar. Um, so and I kind of went off that because the the one day I was reeling in, I, I got it in and a pike had I'd had caught a jack, but the jack had bit it with so much force, so I can do it with fingers. It just popped the uh, the bar out like that. I was lucky that the because I kept tension on it didn't uh, the lure and the pike didn't go. So I've stopped using those. What I now use are these uh, Fox Quick Change or Quick Link. Um, I think they're great because they're twisted around the bar um, so the lure can't come off and the pike can't bite it open um, so it's just it's a safe link for me um, Gray's Prowler um, crimp squashers what are you going to call them I can't remember the proper name for them but um, if you can make it inside there's uh, some grooves on the one side and the other it's flat um, you just need to make sure you get the crimps in there the crimps fit perfect width or length of the uh, the shaft uh, just to squash it down. Um, these are Gray's Prowler wire cutters, um, crimp sleeves. I like red because uh, I think it just looks looks a bit neater. Um, but it, it, it's a visual aid. So if, if it's, the water's murky, you can see just when the lure is right up by the surface. But it also protects if there's any sharp bits sticking out from your crimp or your twiddling or whatever you've done. Um, it protects that so it can't stick into the uh, the fish as well and then this is my uh, my wire trace which is 60 pound um, wire which is made by uh, or is it Jarvis Walker I think it is um, so uh, yeah um, 60 pounds fine for me so uh, yeah I'll uh, quickly put one together I've done, I've done a few already but um, I've got a session next week I just need to make sure I've got some in so uh, yeah so how easy it is. To start off, I'll do on the length of the um, of the tray and use it as a guide. So let's have a look. So 
So the crimp cover, put it on reverse. So the narrow end goes on first. I mean, you could do it the other way around, just slide it up from the fat on, I guess, but slide that on. Just going to show how easy this, this really is. Um, slide your crimp on. The crimps that come in the pack are the right size for, for this wire tray, so don't worry about what you're sticking on. Um, and then slide that on. Loop it over, pinch it together, slide the crimp up and over. This is quite important when you're doing this, make sure your crimp doesn't go too close when you slide it up to the swivel so the swivel can move around. If it hasn't got that ability, you run the risk of cutting your fish off because the, the, uh, it might catch funny and either snap or wear away at the wire trace and eventually it'll give. Two hands, squash that as hard as you can together. A couple of seconds, that's all you need. And as you can see, that's it, job done. Just check to make sure it has done it properly. I've not had it myself where it's not been done right, but just, it's always wise to check it. You're going to find out after you've hooked a fish. Cut it as close as you can to the end of the crimp. So you can see there's barely anything sticking out. Hopefully you can see all this, guys. I'm, I'm guessing because I've seen my phone's on my head as usual. Um, slide the crimp cover up and just push and twist as you're getting it up. Once you get to the eye, just keep pushing. Make sure it goes up and over the eye because that will hold it in place. And then you won't get the uh, the sleeve sliding back down. Uh, it won't affect the swivel because the actual movement comes from the top of the eye. So that still twists around and perfectly fine. Straight around to the end. Slide the uh, sleeve on. Slide the crimp on. Uh, swivel. Always try and make sure you pair the swivels up so you've got a decent swivel as well. These are. Uh, these will do. Yeah. Again, bend it over. Pinch it together, slide the crimp up, again not too close, power down, cut it in nice and close. Slide up, push and twist, push and twist, push and twist, done. Now, that is perfect for the canal, because um, I rarely, well, my PB is 14.7 at the canal, but obviously if you're going to go to rivers and the ability to go further up north, where there's predominantly more or bigger fish, so 20, 25 pound plus, that, as I was talking earlier, thanks to me dogs, uh, that, so your braid will link there, the lure will be there. That diameter is not that big really when you're looking at big fish. So I'll do one more, but now I'm going to go longer. So now, a bit much longer. I'll try and do it quick with this one just to get it through, just show you the, the length difference. So sleeve on. Crimp on, swivel on, bend, pinch, slide the crimp, not too close, two hands squash, cut close, Slide, twist, slide, twist, and just push up and over with the end. Slide, 
sleeve on. Crimp on. Uh, oh, there's one again, really. Oh, there's a big one there, actually. The swivels, I think, the ones I'm using, I'm sure they're Savage Gear swivels as well, so uh, they're decent, uh, decent brands. So bend, pinch, slide up, crimp. Power it down. You know you're giving it some welly when your hand starts to shake, you're squashing it that hard. Well then you know you're uh, hit the right squid the right uh, density. Cut close, slide up, job done. Now if you look at the, uh, the diameter on that one, compared to the diameter on this one, you see there's a huge difference, hopefully you can see it anyway. So you've got a big difference but that's obviously the, the pike, that's guaranteed to go around the pike and not end up with the braid inside its mouth. So um, and that's it, so I'm all good for next week. Um, you know, all this stuff you can get off eBay, um, these are probably the most expensive things you'll need to buy. Um, they vary from $6.99 to $9.99 each. Um, this I think was $4.99 for, uh, so long have so for 10, 10 crimps um, and 10 meters, so you can get plenty out of that. Um, these were two or three quid for 30, so they'll last you for ages. Um, that pretty much, I think, is it. Um, the swivels, other well, swivels you can use, as long as they're heavy going ones, you, I guess you'd want decent carp ones or barber ones, but um, as long as they're heavy duty, they'll do the job. And like I said, just make sure it all matches up. Um, and that's it, guys. I um, hope that's helped someone. Um, but that's my setup. Um, nothing fancy just does the job and that's all i need so uh yeah fantastic thank you very much um hopefully next time i see you'll be on the bank top